there are plus and minuses to the to to both of them. I, again, I think uh, when you're a two-hander, it's a little more difficult to develop a good slice. And for that reason, if you have a one-hander and you can slice well, you also usually develop a little bit better backhand volley. So there's some advantages to that whole point. You have a two-hander. I mean, you got to get a tractor sometimes to bring them up to the net. You know, I mean, it's it's very tough to. So if you want to be a net player. Uh, being a two-hander might hold you back. A one-hander probably will make you come up to the net a little bit better. When the ball gets higher around the shoulders, a two-hander can tilt, take that ball and make a winner out of it. A one-hander will have one hell of a time. And the return of serve, is, uh, it's a little bit, uh, you know, you can get a little bit more power out of a two-hander than a one-hander on the return of serve. People say, well, when you have a one-hander, you can, you can get to the ball better, you know, it reaches a little bit more. And I think, you know, once you get towards the top, that is, to me, is minor. I mean, you know, if you're not quick, you're not quick. Pete was 12. He was 12. And he, I went to the Easter Bowl with him and some other kids, and it was in, it was in Florida played on the red clay. And uh, Pete played up. He played in the 14s. And uh, he lost to the guy 7-5 in the third set. And Pete had a two-handed back and he was, he was serving and volleying. He was coming up the net. He played more up at the net and he had unbelievable volleys, even having a two-handed backhand. So I, I sometimes wonder if that would have made a difference, you know, whether, whether he would have not been able to win as many Wimbledons he probably would have won the French, and I don't know if he would not have won as many Wimbledons because the guy had a great volley even at 12. I mean, from the service line, first volley, the guy had unbelievable feel. So I probably wouldn't have changed his backhand. I probably would have left it a two-hander because I could see that he could do everything that a one-hander could do. The way the ball is hit with the one-hander these days, it's a little bit more what I consider Spanish style, you know? It's the heavier topspin kind of a backhand. They, they slip the grip over almost to a, to a western backhand grip and then sort of roll up and around the ball. They don't really drive through the ball as much. They don't drive through the ball like Pete would drive through the ball. You know, when Pete won the US Open, the first, year, first time he did, he had winners with his backhand constantly. Down the line, he hit outright winners from the baseline. But when I get him at 9, 10, maybe even 11, 11 is sort of a borderline case, I say, what do you want to do? Do you want to hit a one-hander or do you want to hit a two-hander? And the kid goes, I always want to hit a one-hander. And I say, so how come you don't hit a one-hander then? Because my parents want me to hit a two-hander. I said, you know, <laughs> that's besides the point. It's your tennis. It's not your parents' tennis. You know, you're the one who's going to play. Like when I was in Moscow, I did this live television show, and uh, they translated. It was this 10-year-old boy that called in and said, uh, uh, Mr. Lansdorp, you know, I'm 10 years old, and I, I want to hit a one-hander with my coach, Vladimir Stovkovsky, or whatever the hell the guy's name was, said, no, 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 he wants me to hit a two-hander. What do I do? I told him, get rid of, get rid of your coach. Because it's you tennis. If you want to hit a one-hander, you develop a one-handed backhand. I don't care when somebody says that a two-hander gives you a better return of serve, a two-hander gives you more power on the high ball. It doesn't make any difference to me. It is what, whatever, because if the kid wants to hit a one-hander, he's going to hit a one-hander. It's going to be the best shot for him because that's what he loves to do. I love the look of a one-hander. When it's done right, it just looks, looks great, you know. But um, two-handers are, are solid, man, they're solid. In the women, you can get 90% of the women players, if they have two-handed backhand, don't work over their backhand. I mean, you know, the backhand is just solid. I mean, look at Maria. I mean, people that play Maria have to be dumber than Tiger Woods in a way, you know what I mean? I mean, they have to be so stupid because they see him play Maria's backhand all the time. Maria can hit a two-handed backhand with her eyes closed. It's so sound, solid, and powerful.
I think it's easier to teach a one-hander because it's a simpler shot. The execution of a one-hander is very simple. There's not, nothing complicated about it. A two-hander is a little more difficult. One's a little more complicated because you've got to turn, you've got to open up, you got the whole, you cannot stay with the ball as long. With a one-hander, you can actually, the, the principle of hitting through the ball with a one-hander is about as clear as you can make it. It's so simple. Two-hander is more complicated because the, the right arm tends to pull and pull off the ball. So uh, it's a little more difficult <clears throat> when you teach to have them actually hit through the ball. So maybe it's American a little bit more, American ID of hitting two-handers. Uh, people are maybe a little bit more interested in getting early success. Uh, if anybody, it's the parents. Sometimes you actually find that a kid is not a two-hander. He just isn't, you know? He is, it's almost like, it's almost a guy that rides left-handed and you're forced into a right, right-handed. It's almost what it is, and I can see it. And uh, when you don't have a natural two-hander, the two-hander looks a little awkward. It doesn't look smooth. It doesn't look like the, the motion is coming through the ball. It was just something that the kid had to do. Her name was Dasha, okay? And uh, she would come to me uh, from the Chris Everett Academy, and she'd come out to see me like a couple of weeks, uh, every maybe a couple months. And, and she came, and her backhand did not look as natural as it was, like, say, with Maria. And I said, hey, do me a favor and slice. Give me a backhand slice. Her backhand slice was so unbelievable natural. It was such a motion of just sliding through the ball, so simple, so natural, so easy, that in my mind I go, this girl actually should have been a one-hander. Because the two-hander... We can, we can develop it, but it, it's going to take a lot of work. And I one time actually mentioned to Yuri because, uh, you know, sometimes Yuri would call me and say, how is Dasha doing? I said, maybe we should make it a one-hander. Oh, no way, you know what I'm saying? And I always advise people to hit a lot of left-handed forehands if they want to hit a great two-hander. It's one of the things that you have to do, I think. Because once the left arm becomes more natural or swinging through the ball, your two-hander improves. If that never becomes natural, you'll never have a great uh, two-handed backhand.